Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Looky here, I have something, ooh, 15 year old Jim Beam lineage, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, a father and son collaboration, limited batch release. I have the 70 CL version, so for Germany or for Europe, 55.5% um, alcohol, which is 111 proof age 15 i actually have bottle number 5778 and it's batch 01 that always is disturbing to see the 01 which means there might be more basically the same information as here now in order to get the bottle out i actually have to then take off the top here one second so here we go so i have this nice little wooden piece which i'll talk about in a second and then i can pull out this bottle now this is a 250 dollar or 210 euro bottle so it does shut very nicely it does have a little latch here and so on it's not real wood as you can see here it's just laminated all right so it's like a veneer or it's just plastic over there i'm not really sure all right, so um, travel retail, it's not one liter, it's 0 0.7 liter. So Fred No wrote, uh, when I look back at my legacy with Jim Beam, I will always consider this a proud moment. Working with my son to create something new and premium for my family's brand. And Freddie No, the son, that's seventh and eighth generation now by Beam. I've been learning our family traditions from dad for years, so I'm honored to finally collaborate, collaborate with him on what I think is a really unique expression and celebration of our family's heritage. All right, so um, now I am not the target customer for this bottle. Oh, by the way, look at this. For $250, I expect a cork, not a screw cap. Sorry. <laughs> As I said, I am not the um, the target customer for this. This is travel retail, so it's at airports and so on. I haven't found very, very many at all, many people at all. Uh, Fred Minnick did a, a very, very short little review on one of his, I think, press bottles he had. Um, and I must admit that um, for some reason I bought this bottle. I can tell you the reason why. So over here in Germany, what we have is we have different WhatsApp groups. We still use WhatsApp. We don't, we're not at Discord yet. Maybe we'll do that soon. And so one of the, one of the um, many different groups that I have would be Bourbon Talk. And so there's, I don't know, 80, 100 people in there. And one of the people wrote, oh, look, this shop in Germany, they have the lineage 15-year-old for 207 which is the recommended retail price. Yeah, and I was like, oh, interesting. There's eight left. And then about five minutes later, he wrote, oh, look, there's four left. And I was like, okay, good. I'll click. I'll buy one. And then he wrote like 10 minutes later, oh, they're all gone. <laughs> And so these old tips about these old things that are online or at stores, we do as well here, right? So since we're scattered all over Germany, maybe even Europe, uh, most of the things are online retail stores. We can buy whiskey um, online and have it sent to us, no problem whatsoever. So, um, and I bought this and I was like, I think this is actually the most expensive bottle of bourbon I've bought ever. Now, I've bought samples of bottles that are much more expensive. Um... Uh, Van Winkel, Rye, Reserve, 13 years old. Um, some of the, I maybe I bought, I did buy maybe an Angel Envy single cast that was also around 220, 230 euros. Uh, that might have been the most expensive thing I've ever bought and so on. Um, but this is something where I was like, okay, click, no problem. I'm going to do bottle share. I'm going to make a lot of people happy. This sold out very, very quickly. Now, every time I take I take the lid off, I think it's I, I, like an aftershave bottle. It's a very big aftershave bottle, but that's what that is. I'm not really sure if this bottle is something I would actually cherish. It does have the beam really big on there. It has a father and son collaboration. This is the first collaboration of Freddy, eighth generation um, distillery here at the Beam Distillery. Um, it's Beam Suntory, by the way. So the Japanese people do a lot more of deciding uh, decision making than they do in Kentucky. Yes, they make most of the local decisions, but the general overall uh, strategy is more or less Japanese, which is, sorry, we don't want to hear that in America. And um, this is the very first bourbon that he did with his father. He's done his little books, which basically have not been bourbon, have been blends of different things from Canadian rye to other places as well. So um, on the nose, 
Now, if I didn't know better, I would say it's this. All right, so I'm going to take a... Um, I did not do this in my German videos. I'm going to try this real quick. Is my nose um, misled? Or do I really have a little bit of this moment in here? All right, let's try this. I just want to be able to smell the rare breed here. Um, if it's even close to what I think it should be. It's closer than I would than I even imagined. Yep. All right, now I do not think I'm sorry that this bourbon is worth the $250. There is a bourbon hype. There is a bourbon craze. There is this wacky explosion of prices at the moment. But yet, think about what you're paying and what you're getting and what you're actually receiving as a um, in your deal. Put down $250 on the, on, the, on the table, on the counter, and you get one bottle of this. What else could you buy for $250? I, over here in Germany, can buy three of the Bookers. So this is the Booker 2001 uh, 01. We do 01E, which is in German, or which is for Europe. And um, so this is what I would buy. I would actually buy three of these on sale. And we do actually have some online retailers that have good sales on these. Uh, I can get this for 65 euros. So under 80 euros. I'm paying 210 for this. So I can get... Almost three of these, well, 65, 64, I can. I can get three of these for one of these. So I would much, much, much rather have a Booker's um, or two in the house than I would a Jim Beam 15-year-old lineage. Now, um, on the nose, I do admit that the lineage 15-year-old is a little bit more vibrant. So... Yeah, it, 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 it's just, um, it, it, it radiates a great amount, amount of flavor, a fruity flavor, a, a nutty flavor. <laughs> I like the bookers a little bit better. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's very, very oaky as well. There's a little bit of lemon in here, and every every once in a while I get a little bit of a fingernail polish remover, so the acetone. I'm not really sure. I'm not really keen on that. Now, do we use the words from Fred Minnick? <clears throat> Jim Bean's making great products that are not, if it's not mainstream um, products. Jim Beam has their Jim Beam white label and all the other stuff. Those things are of adequate quality. But as soon as they start making exclusive things like this, some of it can be just fantastic. Now, <clears throat> I'm not really convinced that this is fantastic. I think it's good, but it's not, not that much. It's not worth that price tag I have to pay. Now, other people are going to go, no way, Jason, come on, you, you haven't heard of Kentucky Owl, you haven't heard of this, you haven't heard of that. Yes, I have. But still, I'm not buying those products. I don't think alcohol, in this case bourbon, should have a 250 plus price tag on it. I just, time out, no good, I'm not worth you. That's just my appeal on your um, common sense. <laughs> Be careful how much money you dish out for exclusive products like this. All right, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen hardly any YouTubers in the states doing anything about this. Apparently, it's travel retail. Apparently, it's hit Europe more than it has any place else. And um, all right, so are you missing something? Let's take a look. As I said, I like the bookers a little bit better. Um, it is very, very vibrant. There's some oak, there's a vanilla, there's a caramel, there's a leather, there's a pecan nut, there's a little bit of citrus maybe, or a little bit of a lemon moment in here. As I said, there's a tiny little bit more of alcohol. Some people say it's 55%, and my bottle says and is 55.5%. It's 111 proof, so be careful with all the um, different 
press releases, or maybe there's the 750 version and there's the 700 milliliter version. They might differ between the two. I haven't seen any 750 at the moment. And there's a little bit of an herbalness and a lot, a lot of oak. All right, good. Cheers. Wow, that's a lot of oak at the end. Um, I personally believe, my personal opinion, that normally with Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, you have basically like a bell curve, and at the very top is maybe eight to nine, maybe eight to ten years. Just put nine at the top. And so you go up very quickly to the four years old, and a lot of the products are very, very good at four years of age. You go up to eight, okay, excellent, very, very nice. Nine, and then 10, 11, 12, it starts going back down. It's getting over oaked. And if you have something 15, or I remember the first time I tried Elijah Craig 23, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> and people just looked at me and was like, but that's a $400 bottle. It's like, but it's not worth it. But it's 23 years old. I said, it's not worth it. The 18 wasn't worth it. And people just look at me and say, I'm crazy. But I said, try it yourself. It was like, oh, there's a lot of oak. It's, it's too much oak. And it's like, well, are you sure? I said, yes. And that's one of the things I get here. I get too much oak. Um, I'm chewing on the popsicle stick. I don't really need that. Um, does it have a long finish? I'm going to say middle, middle long. It's not really, I've had whiskeys that have much, much longer finish. Um, I am not excited. I'm not enthusiastically enthroned in the, um, due to the flavor profile here. Um, it is a little bit more herbal than I thought it was going to be. Um, is it excellent? I'm going to say, I'm sorry, no. If I'm going to recommend something, I'm going to recommend a Booker's 2021. Cheers. Mmm. 62.65%. This is a um, six year and 11 month bottling. Mm, I like. Very good. <sighs> Lineage, what are we gonna do with you? Um, I'm going to give this uh, bourbon a C plus mark. Now you can, you can dislike me, you can um, unsubscribe, you can do whatever you want to. Get a sample all by yourself, somehow, somewhere, some somehow, and try it yourself and see if I'm totally wrong. I might be, but this is much better a product than that for me. The sweetness is overtaken by a um, astringency, a over oakiness. There might be a little bit of a nuttiness in there, more of the high hazelnut type of roasted moments. A lot of spice. Um, there is caramel in there. It, so C plus, maybe on a good day, a B minus. So um, if I add a tiny, tiny little bit of water. Mm -hmm. Yep, nice. But if this was blind and I were tasting the two of these, I would not have anything enthusiastic to say about this. I would go over here and go, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. I love this. And it's, oh, it's good. What would you pay for this? Ah, 60 euros, <laughs> $250. And that's my problem here. All right. Um, it just doesn't taste like I would expect a $250 15-year-old lineage, lineage to taste like. It does have a good box. Um, in, the, in the time frame at the moment of our CO2 footprint, I must really ask myself and yourself, I mean, that's a pretty picture here of the two guys, Fred and Freddie and so on. Do we really need boxes like this today? And I'm going to say no. 
Um, I don't. All right. So I've always liked bookers. It's been the bottle, nothing else. I just don't need this nice little thing that goes up here and keeps it locked and so on. Um, just not my cup of tea. I'm not the customer that they're actually looking for. They're looking for these businessmen with money to spare and maybe even expense accounts and presents for um, fellow people and so on. Mm. Here, $250 something, la la la, here you go. You're worth that much to me. Maybe, but even then, that, that, that spirit in the bottle is just not wowing me. It's not wooing me. It's not really getting me into its... It's into a seduction here. So sorry. Value for money. It's a D minus F plus. I don't even know if there is a F plus. No way in the world would I ever again pay 250 euros for this. So question of the day is what is your most expensive bourbon bottle you have bought? Would you be so kind and write down the name and the price in the um, chat or in the comments? And we can talk a little bit. As I said, um, Angel Envy cast strength i think 2016 or so on an auction i paid 240 euros basically for something this was basically 207 208 um hmm. what have you been suckered into buying all the best whiskey jason here whiskey from the viewpoint of an american over here tasting rare and exotic whiskeys um maybe one day i'll put this in a little blind challenge and challenge myself and see if i really am of the opinion that is good but not great bye bye